Traction Waveform Free actually comes with some very usable effects plugins and a couple of decent instrument plugins. Now, if you go with Waveform Pro, it comes with even more, but you can also add third party plugins from other developers. So effects and instruments that other companies have created. So in this video, we're going to look at adding those into Waveform. And an important thing to know about Waveform is that it uses 64-bit VST2 or VST3 plugins. Most decent plugins that you can get today, and those might be ones you pay for or ones that you can get for free, they will come with a VST3 version, and some will come with both VST3 and VST2. So if the plugin that you're getting has both versions, I do recommend installing just the VST3 version of it, or else you're going to see duplicates in there and it can kind of confuse you and VST3 plugins are more optimized for CPU usage which means you can use more plugins in a project. I've noticed though that more and more companies are just doing VST3. They're finally doing away with VST2 which is nice and less confusing for you. So now that you know what type of plugins to look for either VST2 or VST3 primarily VST3, where do we install those? Most plugins will have an installer and it will ask you, do you want to install which versions? If you choose to install the VST2 version, then there's typically two different folders on your computer that it's going to install it to. And that will be in C program files. And usually it will be a folder called VST plugins. If you don't have it in there, like I don't have it in here, then you could just create new, new folder and just call it VST plugins if you want. The other folder that's very common is C program files, Steinberg, and then VST plugins. So in there, and that's where you'll find all your VST2 plugins. And VST2 plugins will be shown as .dll files. So they're .dll. Now, VST3s, they install to the same folder on every computer, which is C program files or whatever your main drive is. You might have the letter as different, but program files, common files, and then VST3. And that's where all of your VST3s will be. And those are .vst3 plugins. So you can see there .vst3. If you download a plugin that doesn't have an installer, it just has this .vst3, you would just paste it into this vst3 folder here. And by default, Waveform actually searches for new plugins as you're working in it. So as soon as you drop a new plugin in there, a little thing will pop up on the screen saying, we've detected a new plugin called, and it will put the name there. Do you want to search for new plugins? And you would click search, then you can use it right away. But if for some reason that doesn't happen, we can go into settings and then you go to your plugins tab here. And you'll notice down here, there's this thing automatically check for newly added plugins. And that's what I was talking about. It's going to automatically scan for new plugins for you, which is really nice. I like that feature, but you might have that disabled. So you could just put a check mark there and it's going to enable that, or you can disable that. If you don't like that feature for whatever reason, you can disable it. Now, if you need to manually tell it to scan for new plugins, you can click here, scan for new plugins. You can go to scan for new or updated VST plugins, and that's going to be your VST twos or you can choose scan for new or updated VST3 plugins, which I hope is what you're adding in there. There's also LV2, which is more of a new plugin format and same with C major. I mean, they've been around for a while, but compared to VST, these are newer formats. Now, if I clicked on this one, the VST plugins one, then you can see there's folders in here where I can have it scan for new plugins. And I had this set up for quite a few years now. So there's a few different folders in there. If you want, you can change that or you can add even more folders in here for it to scan. If you have plugins in other folders for whatever reason, you can use that plus sign to have it scan more folders, add them in there if you want, then you would hit scan and it would do its scan. And the same thing with VST3 plugins. 
by default, we have our common files, VST3 in there, and you would just hit scan if that's what you wanted. You could also drag and drop your VST3 plugins or VST plugins in there. So if I had this window open, I could drag and drop that in there. Now that plugin's already noted in there, but if it wasn't, it would pop up on the screen showing that I've just added a new plugin. Another thing we'll look at in this window is our plugin sorting. So if we click here, there's different ways that they can be displayed when you're looking to add your plugins in waveform. So you can sort them by disk location. Maybe you have them organized by effects and instruments and in actual folders on your computer, then you might want to have it by disk location, or you could sort them by category. So if it's compressor, then all your compressors are added in a category, all your EQs, and it can do a decent job at recognizing what each plugin is. The way I like to do it is by manufacturer. That's often how I'm looking for plugins. So that's the way I like it. You can do it however you want, just by clicking there. And now let's look at actually using those plugins in our project. So let's go to our project here. And I'm going to go to guitar one and I'm going to take that distortion off that I added in that video where I recorded it. So all you do is you click on the plugin and delete, or you can right click on it and delete plugin. Now to add a plugin, you just click on this plus sign right there. And you can see I have them sorted by developer. And maybe for this, I want to add an amp. I know I have one here, white amp. I will add that and here's my white amp. I'm actually going to solo this now and let's just hear what this sounds like. That amp right there, that is a third party plugin that doesn't come with waveform. So don't go looking for it unless you've got this one from SoftTube, which is the developer of that one. And if I don't like that white amp, I can just click on it, delete, it's gone. And now maybe I want to add a bass amp sim onto the bass guitar track. So I click there and this time I will go to here and just add that on there quick. So if you want to listen to it on and off, you can click on this little power sign here to turn the effect on and off like that. What I like to do is I'll click on it so you can see it's highlighted and I'll play back. And then I'll just press the F key on my computer keyboard and that turns it off and back on. And you can do that with multiple plugins at the same time. So you hold down control on your computer keyboard, click on the ones that you want to enable and disable. And when we play back, we'll just actually solo this as well. And it's that easy to enable and disable our plugins. Now, one of the cool things about waveform is that the mixer is modular, which means I can drag this plugin after our fader and pan control right there. I can even drag it after the meter if I wanted to, or I can have it in front, but you want to note that the signal flow goes from left to right. So because this is the first plugin on there, the audio is getting fed into there. And then if I had another plugin afterwards, it would go to that and then into our fader here. Now, sometimes you might want to put a plugin after the fader. Now, typically that's going to be with your sends, but sometimes maybe there is some plugin you want after the fader. You can put that there if you want. If we don't want to hit the plus sign there, maybe we want to add the plugin after our meter right here. So I could just right click on the meter and then go add plugin to left and go to waveform utility. And in here I'll add a send 
And now that plugin is after our fader. And of course I can click and drag it wherever I want. Very easy to move plugins around in waveform. Now, if you ever accidentally delete your pan and volume, I'll do that now. You can add that again. We'll just right click here, go to add plugin to left waveform, and we'll go to effect. And in here, we're going to see the volume and pan. And now we have that back in there just in case you ever accidentally do something to it. But this also means we can have multiple instances of our volume and pan on here. For whatever reason you might want that, you can have that. This is the way I primarily work in waveform is using this down at the side here. We can actually go up to the eye and we can close that whole side down. I like using that. You might not, but we'll click on the eye again and we'll have our little mixer at the bottom. And down in here, we can add plugins by using the little plus signs on here. And now we've just added this one band EQ onto this track here. And we can close our mixer down altogether. Like I said, I like using this side view over here. It takes up less space and it kind of gives you a logical view of how your signal flow is going. So you have audio here, it's flowing into whatever's over here, first plugin, and then your fader and whatever you have next, which also means with our instrument plugins, you always want your instrument to be before any effect. So you don't want to have an EQ or compressor or anything before your instrument, unless it's a MIDI effect, which waveform actually does come with a couple of MIDI effects. We'll go here and we'll choose this MIDI chord player. Now we would put that before the instrument, but you wouldn't want to put an EQ before the instrument. Now, the next thing we're going to do is mix down a track to an MP3 or a wave so you can upload it or share it with friends and fans, whatever it is you want to do. We'll do that in the next video, which you can check out right here. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump. Thumbs up.